Hello guys, welcome back to the course of Tutoring with Abdul. In this session of the course, we'll be talking about circuits. Um, circuits include uh, involving resistors. So we will discuss uh, circuits, uh, circuits in series um, condition or series circuits, parallel circuits and a combination of circuits. Uh, as we see, like series circuits are the circuits that has only one path for the current flow and the parallel has more than one path for the current to flow. The combination circuit will have both of them. Uh, we will discover them as we go in this class. <coughs> uh, series circuits are circuits that has only one way for current to flow. So in this diagram, we will see a uh, battery is connected to three resistors. The battery will be going from the positive terminal through uh, resistor 1, then resistor 2, resistor 3, then we're coming back to the negative terminal of the battery. So this will complete the circuit only in one way, and that's why we call it a series circuit. <coughs> uh, this circuit, the series circuit has been usually used in a safety devices, uh, the reason is for that safety devices or safety devices and um, uh, for example the robot grippers there have to be gripping uh, something uh, critical parts like let's say for uh, it's trying to pick up an empty pallet to pick up an empty pallet you have a two jaws they both has to be on so that means they have to be connected in series one switch has to be on the other has to be on too it has to be physically make otherwise it will be dangling one way because one side will be crimped uh, the grip the other side will be not gripped and so that's how we use it that as a safety and uh, a critical parts because we have to be both side on to make it happen uh, the safety for the safety or the security system that's how they use it too <laughs> they they use it like if anything happen if any of these circuits shorts or just like cuts the way so it will trigger this one and that one also so once they do trigger that the alarm will go off or will not even work and then um, this will be for home security for example but uh, uh, for the industry safety like if you're entering a machine uh, let's say this is your uh, e-stop button and this is your door switch and this is your Operator panel e stop, for example. If you try it, if somebody hit this e stop, this whole function will be disabled because you cut the current, you know, like this current will help be cut. If that cuts the current here, then this will not have anything going into it and this will not have anything else. So the machine will be dead and you have to reset this e stop to flow this thing in there to flow the current through it. That's how we use it in safety. Yeah, I said it here. Safety for motor would be adding a fuse or circuit breaker overload in a series setting with motor. That means uh, if we have a motor right here, this is our motor, motor contactor, and this is your overload contact. Uh, this is your contactor for that uh, motor to be, and you got a circuit breaker here. So if, you, if, you, if your motor is drawing more current, the circuit breaker will trip, your overload will trip, like one of these things should trip. Or if you have a fuse, that will trip too. I mean like that's how they use it. They use, usually use one or two. They use overload for the motor. Circuit breaker also for that. If they're not using circuit breaker, they will be using fuse in that setting. So this will be hot side. And this will be your common or neutral. And for safety machines, it'll be, for example, yeah, I say like in robot gripping apart, there has to be both switches on, otherwise it'll be dangling. You know. It will not grip it all the way. So this is for the industrial safety. <coughs> so I, I actually went an ex step extra. Safety for human will be an emergency stop connected in series with the machines operation if any e stop is open this will not, uh, this will stop the movement of the machine which is which is this case still i said like you know it will come back here 
if you hit this e-stop if this e-stop is hit this will cut down the flow of the current here so the machine will be not working no more so we stop until you reset that switch <laughs> voltage drop uh, it is an amount of voltage needed for a circuit to push current through a resistor so the voltage drop is like how much voltage is needed here to this resistor to be function right or that has to be this voltage has to push that current through this resistor that's how we define a voltage drop there uh, the resistor has a we said like we the resistor have two jobs one is the to flow uh, to control the flow of the current the second job is the voltage drop so uh, in a series circuit the sum of a voltage drop across the resistor must be equal to the applied voltage that means anything coming out of this battery terminal should be equal going uh, should be equal to the voltage that's going through all these resistors so the voltage applied voltage supplied voltage was should be equal to the, all the individual voltage in each resistor that's uh, the series circuit uh, in this circuit in the series circuit design we have a, the amps should stay all the way the same the voltage are different in each resistor in each load place um, here's an example I wrote down uh, R1 is for example 10 ohm uh, load one load I just call it load but it's uh, resistors uh, load 2 is 30 ohm uh, also that's 40 and load 4 is 15 so this is 15 ohm and this is 25 ohms so we have a how many voltage drop we have a one between a and b that is number two is between b and c number three is in between uh, c and d c c and d will be number three and e uh, okay so c and e and f will be number four and F, uh, we can call it G and H, or E, F and H will be number five. So we have five voltage drop here. And this, these all voltage drop should be equal to, this is applied voltage or supplied voltage. So it has to be equal. These individual voltage should be equal to the supplied voltage here. Let's move on to the resistance in a series circuit. Uh, as we said earlier, it has two jobs. Resistor has two jobs in a circuit, which is control, of, control, limit, impede the flow of the current in a circuit. And the second one is the voltage drop. And we talked about voltage drop. Uh, let's keep moving on. So we said uh, uh, resistance in a circuit. Uh, and we also mentioned that uh, amperage stays the same current doesn't stay doesn't change and the voltage drop is in a series circuit it has a different vo each resistor unless if they're the same resistor same size resistor they will have the same voltage otherwise different resistor will have a different voltage drop <coughs> and um, so how do we find the resistors here in a series circuit um, let, uh, that's how we were talking about to find the total resistance of a series circuit we simply add all the resistors in a series uh, framework because in series circuit we just add each resistor and each combine them add them together and the final resistor will be given like that such R1 plus R2 R3 and all the way to the N is just a number natural number so you can just pick up we have 15 resistor there so your n will be 15 there so how we add it like that the example here will be uh, a circuit is wired in series way and the applied voltage of uh, the circuit is 24 dc it has two different loads or two different resistor and each one is 80 ohm and 180 ohm find the rt and current of at each point okay so before we do anything let's draw this circuit 
So we got a battery here. So it's our plus side. And we have a resistor of the series wave they said. Series diagram, so let's go to it. It'll be the R1 is 80 ohm. R2 is 180 ohm. The supplied voltage will be 24 volts. And it's asking find the IT. Uh, find the RT. And what is what else is asking here? And the current, yes, the current is there. And RT also. So finding RT will be not as hard. RT is equal to, we said in series circuit, we just add the resistor, R1 plus R2. R1 is 80 ohm, R2 is 180 ohm. So RT will be equal to, it'll be 8, no, this is 0, 180 ohm, sorry. So th sorry, then there'll be it's not will be not eight. It'll be zero sixteen to two hundred sixty ohm. So that is our RT. Now to find IT we use the ohms formula. This is total current. Uh, we, um, the reason I'm finding total current is because current stays the same in everywhere in series circuit. So we will just find IT because our uh, total voltage or VT is given as a 24 volts and we found RT. We can use the Ohm's law to find IT here. So V is equal to I time R. So R, we have this one now and this one now. So we have, we don't have I, so we will find I like that. Be v over R. You have 24 volts divided by 260. 24 divided by 260. Let me punch this number in calculator. 24 divided by 260 is 0 0.092. So 0 0.092 amp. Or if I multi if I write down this one as a milliamp, it will be 92 amps. So IT will be 92 milliamp. So let's see, IT is 92 milliamp and RT is 260 ohm. Hope this helps. Let's move on to the next example. Uh, R1 in a series circuit is a 20 ohm, R2 is 30 ohm, R3 is 50 ohm, R4 is 40 ohm, and the incoming voltage of the circuit is 8 volt DC. Find the total resistance in current. Um, let's see if we can write, uh, draw this diagram after we solve this problem. R1 is given, so R, we will find RT automatically. RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. In a series circuit, we add the resistors. Uh, R1 is 20 ohm, R2 is 30 ohm, R3 is 50 ohm, R4 is 40 ohms. So that will, if you add them all together, it will be, these two will be 90, 120, 140 ohm together. So RT is 140 ohm. Now they said find the uh, VT or supplied voltage is total volt uh, V. Let me correct my V's. V, VT is, uh, okay, that's. 8 volt DC it's asked to find IT and as a previous example IT will be or I, I, I total or current in total uh, 
total current in circuit will be equal to V divided by R T. Uh, this is our Ohm's formula. So it will be 8, oh, 8 volts divided by 140. So that will give us 8 divided by 140. It will give us 0 0.057 and 0 0.057. And if you multiply that by a thousand, you will get a fifty-seven milliamp. So let's see if we can draw this circuit in a small fashion here. We've got one resistor. Oh we have actually three resistors there. Four. One two, three, four, and this is a 20 ohm, 30 ohm, 50 ohm, and that will be 40 ohm. Our voltage, supply voltage is 12, 8 volt DC, and RT is equal to 140 ohm, and IT we said is 57 milliamp but bear this thing in mind every the current stays the same all over the place the voltage supply voltage not the same all the way so it will be different here different here different there and different there uh, we will talk about that in the next example because it's not asked in this example we will just move on uh, to the next example, example number three says in series connection of circuit, uh, the current is 3 amp, uh, R1 is 2500 ohm, R2 is 2500 ohm. Find the total resistance in supplied voltage. This is a different example. I is given 3 amp, R1 is equal to R2, which is 2500. Or 2500 ohm so it's asked like find vt or total voltage applied so in serial circuit we can just add the, uh, to find rt we said we just add them back together so it'll be 2500 20, uh, 2500 2000, will be 5000 5000 ohm or 5k kilo ohm <clears throat> kilo is 1000 so 5 times 1000 1000 be 5000 now to find the voltage supplied or applied voltage we use the ohms formula it will be i time r rt is our r here total resistance so 3 time 5000 ohm amp will make it 15000 volt okay so that's how we find it uh, resistors we added up together 2500 2500 will be 5000 we found that right here or 5 kilo kilo ohm to find the vt or total volt supply voltage it'll be 15,000 let's see if that actually is correct uh, we have a battery connected here we got a resistor that says 2500 this one is 2500 and the current is 3 amp so to find a voltage in this point, uh, we do uh, voltage is equal to resistor, resistance time amperage. Three times uh, 25 will be 7,500. 7,500 here and 7,500 here. So we'll make it 15,000 volts. Yeah, so that is correct. So we check mark, so that will work. Uh, just to clear, I, I hope you guys are okay with this. 
If you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask. Here we, what we did, we simply add, added those two resistors, which give us 5,000 ohms together, these two, this one and this one. Then we use the ohms formula to find the current, uh, to find the voltage, and that's the simply uh, current time resistor, resistance, it will give you the total supplied voltage, which is 15,000 in this case, or 15 kilovolt. Um, move on to example number four. In a series circuit, supply voltage is given as 12 volt DC. Okay, VT is 12 volt DC. The total resistance of the circuit is 280 ohm. R1 is equal to 30 ohm. R2 is 50 ohm. R3 is 15 ohm. Find the R4 and current. So they say find the uh, total IT, uh, total current of N, R4 also. And then draw the circuit. Okay. So RT is equal to R1, R2 plus R3 plus R4. Plug in these values here, see which one is unknown. RT is said like it's 280 ohm equal to R1 is 30 ohm, R2 is 50 ohm, R3 is 15 ohm, R4 is unknown, we will find R4. Uh, put noun on one side and unknown on the other side, so it will be R4 equal to uh, 280 minus 30 minus 50 minus 15. So that will be 80, 95. So 280 will be 180, I think it's 85. 185. Let's do it. Let's do it by calculator. So I don't mess up thing. Yes, it's 185. 185 ohm. So R3 is 185 ohm there. If you add them back together, so let's see if that give you that 280. R3 was 15, that will make it 280, 280. Now to find IT, or total current, here will be V divided by RT. V is 12 volt DC divided by 280. 12 divided by 280 will give us 0 0.04 amp or 4 milliamp. It's actually 0 0.42 amp. I can say this is, uh, that would be 42 milliamp, just to be precise here. Now it says draw the circuit too. Okay, so let's do draw the circuit, draw it. So we have four resistors, one, two, three, four, and go back to the battery. So we got 12 volts DC supply. We have a 30 ohm here, 50 here, 15 ohm right here. And we just found this one was only 185 ohm. And the current was IT was, uh, we found that was 42 milliamp. <coughs> Uh, let's add to this question here something. Find the voltage of V1, V2, V3, V4. So V1 will be equal to, as we say all day, so to find V1, 
V1 is equal to, what is that? I1 time R1. I1, um, the current stays the same in every place in a series circuit, so there'll be 0 0.042 time 30, and this will be voltage drop in point, uh, the first resistor, 0 0.042 time 30, it'll be 1.26 volts, 1.26 volt, this is 6 actually, in V2, will be I2 time R2 same thing 0 0.042 time 50 0 0.042 time 50 will give us 2.1 volt and V3 will be equal to I3 time R3 be 0 0.042 time 15 that would be 0 0.63 volt and V4 will be I4 time R4 0 0.042 time 185 it will give us a bigger voltage drop here 7.7 7 volt and now we said in a series circle the voltage drop should be equal to the supply voltage and all the individual voltage added together so let's add them together 7.77 7 .7, added to 0.63 this is added to 2.1 and added to 1.26 so it will give us 11 11.76 cuz i rounded up a little bit so close to 12 volts dc so that's how we find the voltage drop in each point okay now we have a what we what if we have a power in the circuit power including circuits uh, let's solve some example for them too um, r1 is equal to 45 R2 is 35, R3 is 30. So a supplied or V applied voltage is 24 volt DC. If your circuit current is 22, 0.22 amp, find the total resistor, resistor, resistance power of each at each point and a power at each resistor and then total power draw the circuit. We forgot to mention something. Total power in the circuit will be power uh, we will we will deal with the power the same way we deal with the resistor we will add them individual power so the total power should be equal to the individually power added together <clears throat> and then say like finally it says draw the circuit okay let's uh, find rt first rt will be equal to the sum of all resistor be r1 r2 R3, so we have a 45, 35, and 30 ohms. So this will give us uh, 80, and there will be 110 ohms. And so VT is equal to 24 volt DC, and I is equal to uh, 0.22 amp. So to find a to find a PT or total power in a circuit, we can say like uh, we use this formula. I will use it in red to just remind you guys. P is equal to I time V because we have I and we also have a we also have a voltage and current they are given. So we can go ahead and do that. So it'll be I time V. I is 0.22 and V is 24 volt. So if you add them, if you multiply them together, 0.22 multiplied by 24, it'll be giving you 5.28 watts because power, uh, unit of power is watts. 
eight watts. So we found the PT also. Uh, now it's asking to find the power at each point of the resistor. Let's draw this circuit before we move on. Plus, we have one resistor, second resistor, third resistor, and returning. We said V was equal to 24 volt, and RT is equal to 110 ohms, and uh, IT is equal to 0.22 amp. And uh, PT is equal to 5.28 watts. Now, it says find the power in each point of this resistor. So we will find it. Hold on for a second here. And uh, we also can find the also let's add to this question also find v1 v2 v3 to give you guys a little bit more practice so we have a v1 find that we have p1 find it v2 p2 v3 p3 <clears throat> let's go ahead and find v1 first v1 will be uh, let's do this in a different color here so we know it is right v1 is equal to i1 time r1 so v1 is equal to i1 i stays the same all over the place in a series circuit will be 0 0.2 2 amp multiply by 45 amp, 45 ohms that will give us 0.22 multiplied by 45 give us 9.9 .9 volts Nine point nine volt now v2 is equal to uh, i2 time r2 which will give us 0.22 time 35.2235 will give us 7.7 .7 volt. Now V3 will give us I3 time R3 will be 0.22 multiply by 30. It'll give us 6.6 .6 volt. So we also found this one. So that was a 9.9 .9 volt. This was 7.7 .7 volt. And this is 6.6 .6 volt. But if you add them together, that should give you the supplied voltage, which is 24. Let's add these 6.6 .6 plus 7.7 .7 plus 9.9. .9. This give you 24.2 volts, which is close enough. If you don't round up, it will give you exact value. So we got them. Now let's find the P1 and P2, P3, because PT is P, total power. We found it 5.28. So find P1 here. P1 we said is a I1 time V1. I1 is a, we said is same as a, everywhere is 0 0.22 and v1 was 9.9 .9. so 0 0.22 times 9.9 .9 will give me 2.178 watts let's find p2 it'll be i2 time v2 i2 is the same 
every uh, i is a current is the same so in a series circuit so we use 0.22 amp multiply by 7.7 .7. it'll give us 1.69 volts coming in watts one point six nine four watts and finally p3 will be equal to i3 multiply by v3 i3 will be same as the it because series circuit and v3 is 6.6 .6 volt So multiplying these together will give me 1.452 watts. If you add these together, that should give you this number right here, 5.28. Okay, so 1.452 added to 1.694, add that number to 2.178. You give me we it's all this will be equal to 5.324 watts we're not getting the exact value because I'm well, the reason we're not getting the exact value is because we rounded uh, through our procedure we rounded many numbers so 5.28 and 5.324 is not that far off so let's move on to the next example. In a series circuit, uh, we have a th three resistors wired up in series way. Uh, two are given, R1 and R2 are given. R3 is unknown. Uh, what is it asking? Find the, uh, it's also given the supply voltage here. This is, find out the, current in the circuit and power and point one uh, resistor one and resistor two resistor three and also find the total power of the circuit okay so to find the total resistance we had this formula for the series circuit resistor we add individual resistor together and we that will give us total resistance of a circuit but here the case is we are r3 is unknown RT is given, so R3 will be equal to uh, RT, which is 1100, minus R1, which is 300, minus R3, R2, which is 500. R3 will be, in this case, 800 minus 1100 will be 300 ohms. How we did that? Let's do it. R3, we did a uh, we move these two to this side. It will be RT minus R1 minus R2. So that's how we got here. Uh, we got RT right there. I mean, we already have RT, but let's find uh, R3 is 300 ohms. We found that. Now find I or IT total current will be equal to supplied voltage divided by RT. Or total resistance which is 1100 uh, I mean 120 volts divided by 1100 it will give me 120 divided by 1100 point let's say it's point one one amp Um, change the color for this 0.11 amp I round that one too just to keep that in mind now we need to find a p1 p2 p3 and also total power of the circuit p1 is equal p is equal to we said as the general formula for power is v time i but here we don't have a since it's asking for P1, we know I1 is equal to IT. And this is all over the place. 0 0.11 amp will be common in all resistors because of series circuit. 
but we don't have v1 but instead we have r1 we can use a formula that we said and let's plug in the value of v or voltage from the ohms law uh, v is equal to i time r this is v time i1 you can say that Okay, that will be I1 squared time R. So I1 squared time R, let's do some math here. 0.11, it will give me, this will give me 0 0.0121 time R1 is 300 ohms. So this will give me P1 will be 3.63 watts. Okay, so now P2 will be equal to, we will use the exact same formula here, which will be I2 squared times R2. Uh, that R2 is 500, I believe, yes. So it'll be 0 0.011 squared times 500 will give us 0 0.0121 times 500 will give me 6.0 five watts now p3 is equal to i3 squared time r3 so we know this uh, the square point one one let's write it down time r3 we found was 300 ohms Three hundred ohms, and that will give us uh, since the P one and R one should be same six point six three watts. We can find P uh, total power just by adding these, or we will find in other way too. Six point six three plus six point zero five. No, that's a. Uh, that's my mis my bad. That's not right, actually. It's not 6.63. It's a 3.63. Because this first one is 3.63. 3.63. P2 is 6.05. P3 will be 6, uh, 3.63. If you add them all together, it will give you somewhere 3.63 times 2, 6.05, 13.31 watts. 13.31 watts. Because the total wattage will be equal to the individual watts going through the circuit, adding them together. Now, see if we can find the same way from the Ohm's law. So, PT is equal to IT time VT total voltage multiplied by total current it's 120 volt supply time point one 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 twenty time point one one is give me thirteen point two watts 
again we're not getting the exact value because I've been rounding it up so these two should be somewhere close to each other and that's how we found these values <clears throat> so there's a note here uh, it says voltage divided divider series circuit in a series circuit can create voltage divider meaning it can di provide different voltage in different uh, points uh, we see that here the voltage in this point will be different than voltage in this point and then vo voltage in this point so that's what it means so that means that voltage will be different in each point that in a series circuit uh, since uh, we talked about how to find the values by the formulas let's see how we can find the values by using the multimeter or voltmeter <clears throat> we can uh, using voltmeter or multimeter we can with this is multimeter using multimeter we can check voltage resistance amperage polarity of a voltage this multimeter has a uh, the one that we use for these things, we ha usually have two leads. Uh, the black will be negative and red will be positive terminal of that. How we check the voltage is I'll show you in this example here. Um, you put a, if you want to check the voltage across this resistance, this resistor. So you put your one lead on this side and the other one on that side. It will when you put your leads on both side or one on each side uh, make sure what the circuit is uh, is if it's dc then turn your dc setting on on the multimeter if it's ac then then turn your ac knob on the multimeter um, once you do that it will just give you the uh, voltage voltage uh, put in, uh, differential so what is between here and there it will give you that voltage point going forward to this example uh, it says like find use the ohm's loss formula and other if needed to sh find these the circuit value it also says like the practical circuit i will put a practical circuit of this thing together you know, if possible you know in in future soon soon future so stay tuned and find out if that circuit's actually working right. Okay, so what is S to find? It says um, V1, I mean R1, R2, R3, R4. The resistance are given. Uh, let's find the RT here first to make life easier. It will be R1 plus R2 plus R3, R4. R5 and R6 there will be 300 300 there will be 600 750 850 there will be 1000 so altogether that will be 1400 ohms so we found RT here RT is done and voltage supplied is 5 volt we can find it in this case in this case will be i1 it will be equal to i2 it will be equal to i3 it will be equal to i4 be equal to i5 because it's a series circuit so how we find that it will be voltage it's using ohm's law i will be equal to v divided by r so V is given as 5 volt and we found RT was 1400 ohms. It will be very small amperage. 5 divided by 1400. It will give me 0 0.0035. 0 0.0035 amps. Uh, let's write down this as a milliamp. It will be 
milliamp. Now it's a uh, let's find out V1, P2, and V1 in uh, the voltage in every point and power at every point. Uh, we said that so I1 is equal to I2, I3, I4 is equal to I5 and this is equal to I6 and this is all 3.5 milliamp so this is our current now let's find our voltage in every point so V1 will be equal to from the ohms law we see like it will be I1 times R1 I1 times R1. R1 was the, what is R1? 300. R1 is 300. I1 is 0 0.0035 times 300. It will give me 1.05 volt. V2 will be I2 times R2. I, I, I2 still same 0 0.035 R2 is 300 so that will be 1.05 also V3 is equal to I3 times R3 I3 is same as R2 and R3 is 150 150 that will give me 0.525 volt now v4 is equal to i4 times r4 0.035 times r4 is 100 It'll give me 0.35 volt. I5 is equal to not I5, sorry. V5 is equal to I5 times R5. 0 0.0035 times uh, it'll be 150. It'll give me 0.525 volt. Now V6 will be equal to I6 times R6 0.0035 times 400. And this gives me 1.4 volts. So this is how we find our individual voltage drop. Uh, if you add them together, they should give you the supply voltage, which is 5. Uh, check it out. With this. And I add them together is 8 equal to, to 5 volt. Uh, simple thing will be just add them see if it adds up please check this one out for me if it is somewhere rounding in around issue uh, around the number that's okay if it's if it give you like 5.8 6.5 some bigger value then we have a problem we did something wrong please check this one for me now let's find the uh, p1 p2 p3 and all the way to p6 so P1 is equal to, we from the formula we have is I1 times V1. We found I1 was 0 0.0035 and V1 is 1 
so these should be multiplied together 2.0035 times 1.05 it give me 0 0.0036 watts or if I multiply that by 1000 I'll give 3.67 or 3.6 milli watts P2 will be I2 time V2 and that will give me the same exact number because they are the same 0 0.0035 and V2 was 1.05 that will give me 3.6 milliwatts or 0 0.0036 watts P3 will give me uh, I3 time V3 with 0 0.0035 time V3 was 0 0.5 to 5 0 0.525 which give me 0 0.0018 watt P4 will be I4 time V4 be 0 0.0035 time I V4 is 0 0.35 this will give me Point one point zero zero one two watt P five will give me I five time V five is zero point zero zero three five time V5 is 0.52 watt or 0 0.0018 we had the similar there so it will be 0 0.0018 watts P6 will be I6 time V6 I6 is 0 0.035 time v6 is 1.4 it'll give me 0 0.0049 watts okay so we have with the p the pt the total power will be equal to we can do it two way add them p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus p4 plus p5 p6 and that will give us a number and or you can do it pt will be equal total power will be equal to total voltage times total current so total voltage is 5 mul multiply by 0 0.0035 5 times 0 0.0035 will give me 0 0.0175 watts now to do it this way I'll have to add these things together see what numbers we get So if we add a P1 all the way to P6, it'll give us 0 0.0169 watts, which is a little off on the hundred. Uh, it is uh, this is actually 0 0.06, 0 0.0169 watts, and that's a 
the calculated value and that's how we did it individually because this account for a lot of missed uh, rounding issues there so we are off a little bit that happens in rounding problems